Welcome to the Epcotion Adventure, a podcast where we'll talk about all things Disney, including tips and tricks, festivals and favorites, and the very latest in news and reviews. But we're still old enough to remember when we didn't live with the land, but we sure did listen to it. This is episode 10. Speaking of Disney, or an interview with our friend Catherine. So now, please remain seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast as we embark on our Epcotion Adventure. Howdy, folks, and welcome to Episode 10 of the Epcotion Adventure. I'm Rod. And I'm Sue. And today we're talking to our friend Catherine about her first trip to Epcot and to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Yeah, we've been telling you about this trip for a while and about her reactions, so it's time to bring her to you one-on-one and let you hear from her directly. We did this recording through Zoom, so the audio quality is a little bit less than normal, but without further ado, here's Catherine. So, Catherine, welcome to our party. It's Thank so good you. to have you. Haven't seen it's you good in to be here. days. <laughs> <laughs> so, first things up, Catherine, um, we just got back from a trip together. Um, did you know? Yes. Did you know? I did know, weirdly enough. <laughs> uh, first of all, why don't you tell the kind listeners how we three are connected? How do we know each other? Well, first of all, Sue came for an interview at the place where I work many moons ago, and she was carrying a fantastic purse, and I knew instantly I needed to chat with her. And um, we've actually been friends ever since then. And because of that, then I met the mama and the papa, and then I met the rod, and I've known the whole (laughs) family now for a long time, and it's sort of like we're basically related at this point. It's true. We do introduce you as our sister nowadays. Oh, yeah. We're recording this from our guest room, which we um, refer to as Catherine's room. So, <laughs> so yeah, she's basically part of the family. Yeah, so we always say that Kate Spade brought us together. So thanks, Kate. It's so true. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so as we have told the folks in our previous episodes, talking about our trip that we did, you don't have a long history with Disney. I think that's not I part don't. of your upbringing. I know, that's weird. I think in some states that's actually considered child abuse. I think that's why we had to adopt you. Right. So (laughs) We actually found out at one point, I think we brought this up a while back, that Catherine had gone to Disney World as an adult, as a child. As a grown-up. As a grown-up, okay. And did all four parks in one day. Uh, We basically told her she did it wrong and has never been to Disney World. So that's why we took her to the Flower and Garden Festival, or as I like to call it, the Flower, Garden, Wine, and Food Festival. (laughs) That seems accurate. (laughs) (laughs) Very true. Catherine, tell us, I have that long-term history with Disney. Tell us what your first Disney memory is. Wow. Um, It's not super clear to me what my first Disney memory is, but I did grow up watching the wide, was it called the wide world of Disney or the, when they would play Disney movies on TV, what was it like Saturday nights or something? Yeah. Yeah. The, the wonderful that world was of Disney. Disney. There it is. Yeah. That was Disney for me. Just watching the movies on TV. That's awesome. I, I think a lot of people, especially people who didn't grow up near the parks. I think that was a lot of people's first introduction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was my first introduction to Walt Disney World. Was watching the opening in 1971 on Wonderful World of, World of Disney. Apparently, I I have zero memory of it. I don't even know how old I was. I was probably in a stroller. Apparently, when I was very small, we I guess it would have been Disney World that like I was there at some point, but I was probably in a stroller and you know napping and drooling and. <laughs> That's really cool. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So yeah, we do tease you that you, that this was the first time that you've been to Epcot, but as we have just revealed, it was not actually your first time to Epcot, um, but you did go one time and do all four parks in one day as your first visit, which is just. I did. Wrong. Please people. Don't, I know. Don't, 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 don't do, do that. Don't, so, don't, don't be Catherine. <laughs> I mean, be Catherine today, but don't be old Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I am curious from that trip, do you have impressions that were left, memories that you made that single day? I mean, the first day I saw the golf ball? 
It's not it a golf not ball. A ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I have... gag with us. And yeah. I have to do ball. it because it's it's my favorite way to push your buttons. Um yeah, 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 yeah. actually it was a crazy it was a crazy time that that day was not so. But like I do remember we went to an amazing restaurant, no clue what it was, in Animal <laughs> Kingdom and had an amazing meal. Yak um, and Yeti would be my suggestion. Probably. Maybe. It was pricey, I know that. Um, but it was just so like it was the one really frivolous thing we did. I remember uh, okay, actually the thing that maybe made the biggest impression was the castle. Like the moment when you come around, we came around a corner. I don't know what, because uh-huh. I don't know the park well. But <laughs> even though I'm not a, a Disney person, when I came around the corner and looked and straight down the road or the lane or whatever is that castle, like it's an impressive sight. It is like, even for me, magical. Like you, you sort of can't believe because, you know, I grew up seeing that castle on the logo of the movie every week. Yeah. So that was pretty cool to see that. It really was. That's a that's a really good thing to walk away with, I think, as your as your one memory. It's hard to hold on yeah. to specific memories. I would imagine trying to do all four parks in one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the moment that you got to sit down and enjoy something is what stands yeah. out in that first vision of the castle. That's yeah. cool. Well, and food is one of those things that is such a reminder of the past for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. For me, it is for me. Yeah, for me, it smells. Uh, the smells I remember when I first went uh, are still part of me. And there's yeah. certain times when we'll pass something on a highway or on the road or even at Disney. I'm like, oh, this reminds me of, mm-hmm. to this day, diesel. The smell of diesel reminds me of the submarines at uh, Disneyland. So really? <laughs> I have that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so folks who have been listening know that we did two days at Universal and one day at Disney. And yes. that was to do your birthday trip so that we could hit Harry Potter. Why, why Harry Potter? You know, I would, sometimes as an almost 50 year old adult, I, I want to chastise myself for being so into Harry Potter, but I just am. I don't know why. Um, I, so like I've read all the books and I've watched all the movies. I just love the story and the world of Harry Potter is just so interesting. And, you know, those of you who love Harry Potter and you've watched the movies, like when you hear the music, it, it just evokes a feeling um and you see those visuals so i had heard from other people who had been to the harry the wizarding world of harry potter um about (laughs) right right i had had heard just how incredible it was and it's like i'm not a big theme park person or amusement park person but that i want to do so yeah i've wanted to do it for a number of years now that is awesome i was so happy that we got to do that with you me too how did it meet your expectations? Like, what were your expectations going in? And then as you experienced it, did it meet what you thought it would be? It it did. Well, you know what's funny? I didn't really think about there being rides. I don't know why. I, How it, funny. I know. I mean, I had heard about the Gringotts one. So I did know there were rides. But in the way I thought about it leading up, I don't know. I just more thought about the feeling of the place and the look of the place and the just being immersed in the world. I just kind of forgot about rides, but some of the rides were really fun. Like forbidden journey. Uh-huh. I did three times or four times. Some Like I just wrote it over and over. Cause I just <laughs> really liked it. I would say that it definitely met my expectations when like we did, we did the London side first and then we got on the train to go to the other and man, there's this musical cue when you're on that train and Hogwarts comes into view and yeah. this musical crescendo, like, it's so good. I actually teared up and that surprised me. <laughs> you know what got me this time that didn't in the past was seeing Robbie Coltrane, was seeing Hagrid. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Considering he yeah. just passed. Seeing him standing yeah. on the platform and waving, for some reason yeah. it just hit me. It was like, oh. That was good. Yeah, but they they really did do an excellent job in the the structures. Like there's not a straight line anywhere, which I love. Not yes. a flat roof line. Nowhere is there a, a flat roof line. It's just um 
they really did create the world of Harry Potter. And if you're into it, which I am, it's just, it's a little bit overwhelming at first. And it makes you like, <laughs> like you kind of want to giggle a lot. Like I'm in this, <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was great. Loved it. To be honest, when Sue and I go into Magic Kingdom, I even though I worked there, when Sue and I go to Magic Kingdom, still coming in and going under the train station uh, or the bridge and then coming around the corner and seeing the castle, it still yeah. makes both of us kind of tear up a little bit. It there's the magic's still there. Uh, yeah. And it's it's great to see that the magic's there for <laughs> you for the first time for the Harry Potter side and and for Epcot even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So then after Harry Potter, we did move to Epcot for a day. And that was kind of a bonus day. That wasn't part of our original plan. We ended up getting to do that um, kind of on the fly. So walking into Epcot then, what were your expectations and what was your first impression? I think I expected I expected it to feel way more crowded and like, I don't even know how to, like, for me, I, I expected to be walking into what, what is one of the reasons I'm not big on theme parks and amusement parks. Just people packed everywhere, grumpy kids, you know, stuff everywhere. But Epcot is not like, I mean, granted, the number of people is different on any given day, I'm sure. Right. But it's so open. There's so much just openness and bigness about the space that even with a lot of people, like I I don't think I would necessarily feel shoulder to shoulder and packed in, you know? The That's one of the reasons of, we love it too. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of beauty, like nature beauty, which I am a big like I love trees and green and all water is that and it just it it's not a park that's full of stuff. Does that makes sense. Like it didn't feel yes. full of stuff to me. Yeah, it has less rides than most of the Disney parks, and but that's by design. It's supposed to right. be more. I don't want to say for adults; it is for everybody, and you can see that by the addition of Frozen and Ratatouille and yeah, uh, Guardians yeah. and Nemo. However, even after all these years, after going for the first year and now going forty years later, mm-hmm. it still feels fresh and magical to me as well. And that's one of the reasons specifically we wanted to make sure that you got to see the Flower and Garden Festival is Mm -hmm. knowing that that's something that you would enjoy. Mm -hmm. All the color and all the extra topiaries and everything that they just just make the park so gorgeous during this particular festival. Yeah, some of those topiaries were incredible. Right? They're amazing. Did you have a favorite, just thinking back? Yeah, I can't now remember who it was, but there was like this arch. Uh, like a half moon arch around her with yes. um, greenery sort of draping down from it. It, it was, it just looked. That was Tiana. Was it oh, Tiana? Yeah. yeah. Princess Tiana over by American. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. She's new this year and she's mm. been getting a lot of attention because they just did a phenomenal job on her. I'm a huge Arabelle fan and having her at the front of the park though was my favorite. Yeah, the whole family Madrigal, <laughs> except for Bruno. I don't know why he's not hiding in the back somewhere. We don't talk about Bruno. No, no just, we don't. I did. I we don't talk about Bruno. Too soon. Too oh, soon, yeah. Sue. So. Okay. Um, it, it, or it, maybe that Cinderella's horse, Bruno. Then is that what? No, Cinderella's dog. Cinderella's dog. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go over all the Brunos later. There's a lot of Brunos. <laughs> um, I have to tell you. I have to tell you because I think that it will make you happy. The what's the real spaceship Earth? Yes, mm-hmm. Very. good job. Ten oh, points that's... for Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I would say, kind of in awe when we got right up to it and we're standing like under it in the queue. I loved the look of the structure against that beautiful sky that day. It is actually a really impressive structure and. I also happen to be a person who loves retro and the whole park has such a really, in my opinion, cool retro feel. So yeah, Epcot exceeded my expectations. I am so glad to hear that. Yeah. Oh, that makes me so happy. What ended up being <laughs> your favorite attraction that day? At Epcot? Yeah. At Epcot. Oh, we didn't go on that many attractions, but what was your favorite one? No. 
we did it just as a rundown we did spaceship Earth. Yeah. Yeah. we did nemo and friends we did living with the land we did soren we did frozen ever oh. after and that might be it yeah. we never made it back to ratatouille or imagination or imagination yeah we we were focused mostly on food and yeah uh garden i, I almost said water. oh and you did guardians oh and guardians yes oh that's right oh Okay, so I had my answer till you reminded me about guardians. So I'm gonna answer. I'm I'm gonna answer badly, but I think it's it's good information. It's just not really answering your question. First of all, I think from a immersion experience perspective, before the before you're actually on the ride, so to speak, Frozen was pretty great. Just the, the, the look of is stellar. Yeah, yes. it is. It really is. Um, it was a good ride too, but like, I just liked the atmosphere of Frozen. I agree. Um, I love that cue. Yeah. Before you reminded me of Guardians, which was a freaking awesome, fun ride. <laughs> just <laughs> really fun. I would have said it was a toss up between Soren and Living with the Land. Interesting. Like, I really liked Soren was so cool. Like, it was just cool, but I, I really got into the portion of living with the land where we were going through the greenhouses and stuff. I love yes, it. it is. It's unexpectedly cool, right? Yep. Like you hear yep. that you're going to go through some greenhouses on a boat and you're like, oh, that sounds great. <laughs> <We need. laughs> yeah, next year yeah. we're going to plan on taking you to the behind the seeds tour, which oh, is yeah, the walking yeah. tour. We talked about it this year, but we didn't have the time. Next year we're going to yep. make sure that's planned. We'll build that in yeah. for sure. Yeah. So was, I didn't really pick one, but there you go. It was fun getting to do Spaceship Earth with you too. It was it was interesting to hear, <laughs> like you were like responding to what Dame Judy was saying. You were like, "Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was really <laughs> funny." Like, you know, like you had the whole conversation going on. It was great. <laughs> that, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> with the photos, you had a perfectly normal face, and I was bits of face again. I don't know why my face pixelates. Spaceship Earth, why do you hate Sue? Right? I don't understand. It, here's my theory. It doesn't hate you. It just can't. It doesn't have enough ability to take in all of who you are. So it has to pixelate. It's her aura. That's it. Yeah. Now, yeah. I think it's actually yeah. Spaceship Earth's computer's just like getting up. Not her again. Oh, come no. on. I'll have to post a picture that that'll be one of it's, the pictures I post for this episode. It's, and yeah, disturbing. It's, it really is. It's oh, disturbing. during COVID, it was very disturbing because it would cut off half your head and you would just have a nose and eyes because of the mask. <laughs> that was yeah. So before Ooh. we went, I had asked you what your favorite country you thought would be, and you had said Italy. Mm-hmm. And coming out, you said your favorite was Morocco. So I'm curious yeah. what changed your mind. I think. I didn't really have a, I didn't really have a box for Morocco. I've never really been exposed to much that would kind of have form an opinion or an expectation in my mind about it. With mm-hmm. Germany and Italy, like I've seen so much. I've been to Germany. Like I've seen so many photos. I feel like I just get that flavor. So I, and I like it. So I just assumed, but what changed, I think was partly that I didn't walk into Morocco having an opinion about it already. So it was all just fresh and a surprise. But one thing I have learned about myself is that architecturally in, in a room and the way a room is decorated, like I love layers and textures, mm-hmm. like multiple textures makes me really happy. And that entire country was lots of layers, lots of textures, lots of detail, um, yes. really beautiful detail. So, yeah, I think it was just that. Like, I loved the flavor of it, how it I love felt. That. I love all the hidden areas in Morocco. You walk back behind the restaurants area, mm-hmm. and there's just these little alcoves with gorgeous architecture and detailing and quietness. Because yep. <laughs> the kids yeah, don't go you... back there because there's nothing to draw them back. Exactly. And you feel, when you're back there, it feels like you found a place they don't plan for people to go. Yes. You yeah. know, like you found yeah, a it secret does, place. It feels like a secret hideaway. Yeah, I love that. I love what you said that you didn't have a box for Morocco before we went in. That's so true. I think yeah. that's true for so many people who go to Epcot. You you don't know what to put there. You don't know what it is right. in your head. Yeah, that's right. so interesting. 
Yeah, that that is one of those unexpected treats that I had a feeling was going to attract you. And I was <laughs> glad to see that you enjoyed it. And it did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know me or something. I know, weird. <laughs> As you know, Rod and I are planning a follow-up trip to finish up some of the things that we didn't get to try when we were there for the festival. But the things that we did try, we haven't really talked about yet on the podcast. We're saving that for when we get back. But I am curious, what was your favorite bite of the day? Ooh, good question. Oh, gosh. That is tough. Okay, let me think about it for a minute. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a minute, but... um... Take as long as you want. We can edit. <laughs> I, yeah, that's true. All right, I'll clean it up and post. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'm going to go with that first, that straw, uh, was it a watermelon salad? Oh, I think yes. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, that's I, I mean, super high on my list as well. There was nothing that wasn't good. There were some things that were just like, meh. But I really liked the flavor combos in there. If I skipped the blueberries because gross. But even without them, <laughs> I, yeah, I really liked the combination of flavors. And I've discovered in recent years that I really like arugula and that peppery taste it has. And that was just really nice in there. It was good. I agree. Yeah, that was from the Florida Fresh Kiosk. And it's the watermelon salad. It's watermelon and blueberries and arugula and balsamic glaze. And was there feta in there? Right. There, oh, was. Uh, there was creamy. It was really the, creamy too. It, it was it the creamiest. Like cheese. Yeah, it was the creamiest feta I've ever had. It was awesome. Yeah, and, and the flavors and textures in there. You're yeah, you nailed it. Everything was just perfect. And for the person really following was. us in Holland, um, arugula is rocket. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, the other thing, which again, we're not really talking about the festival foods yet, but since we've got you, the other thing yeah. that um, was delicious from that booth was the cucumber watermelon slushy slushy yes it was with the gin and it I, was yeah so refreshing and so mm -hmm. like just bright it had this mm -hmm. brightness to it that was just oh man it was just delightful yeah. i was disappointed i couldn't finish mine because it really was it was so good i finished mine <laughs> I, yeah. I very quickly let gin go to waste so <laughs> but that slushy um in the hot day was just perfect it was so we unexpectedly ended up park hopping that day and yes. uh ended up sacrificing three countries we didn't make it to canada uk or france oh france we missed the cheese in a bowl we're going back or a croissant croissant and a croissant don't worry france we're coming for you, cheese. <laughs> oh, yes. You will be mine. But. For Marge. Because we um, skipped those, we got to go over to studios. So I'm curious from your perspective, was that a good trade-off for you as a first time? No, it was horrible. I'm so mad we did it. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was absolutely a good trade-off. I, I, okay, I loved Harry Potter, right? I mm -hmm. loved it. I, the whole point of, for me, the whole point of the trip was Harry Potter. But, oh my word, <laughs> the Star Wars. I just, like, I feel like I just walked around with, my, like, I'm, like, I'm Michael, Jane and Michael Banks, you know, like a codfish. My mouth is, <laughs> Does your mouth like, Michael, you're not a codfish. Yes. I don't know what the difference was, but somehow, that area, walking into that area, felt even more mm -hmm. like I had actually walked into, like, real life, the world of Star Wars. Well, you yeah. did. Even, no, it's real. You're, you're really in even, Star Wars. <laughs> but more than, even more, somehow there was something that I cannot tell you, I don't know what it was, that as much as I felt like I was immersed in the world of Harry Potter, I felt it more at Star Wars. The thing is the sight lines a lot of times. With Universal... Again, we stated this the other day, too, when we're talking about Universal Parks. The theming gets lost when you look around a corner or look out over the water and see the coaster. Whereas with yeah, Disney, yeah. they are so careful for the sight lines, mostly. Yeah. I mean, when you come out of Splash Mountain and look out and see the castle or at Disneyland Matterhorn, it, okay, it's a little lost. But Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland and at Studios, you're in Star Wars for as long as you're there. They were very yeah. careful for those sightlines for th that purpose. 
the Millennium Falcon. To walk out and see it sitting there is amazing. One of the other things that did that for this particular trip is because we arrived while it was pouring down rain. So a lot of people left. True. We were yeah. there after dark when it's gorgeous anyway with all the lighting. I have the lighting. Yeah. So between the dark and the lighting and the lack of people, I think that probably yeah. helped as well to just feel like, oh my gosh, I'm walking around a marketplace on another planet yeah. in the Star Wars. Yeah. Well, and not knowing exactly what Rise of the Resistance was, did, right. did that take you off guard to the enormity of it or to yeah. just how the cast yeah. members played into it? The the enormity of it, absolutely. Like when you guys said we were going to do it and I'm now I'm expecting a ride, which it is, but there's like the quote unquote queue, which we didn't really stand much in a queue because no one was there, but it didn't <laughs> like all of the precursor to the actual ride portion there was so much of it and again you're just you're just immersed like i i was definitely taken off guard by all of it just just the detail of it the authenticity of it like i was living the life i wasn't on a ride yes that's what i always say like the other ones are rides (laughs) like even falcon which is great smugglers run Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's super fun, but it's a ride. When you go on yeah. Rise of the Resistance, you're in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know yeah. there's a lot to absorb in that ride. And looking back, like, is there one single moment that you're like, that was the thing? Yep. Uh, I don't know. Okay. You'll have to edit this out if it gives too much away for people who maybe haven't been on it yet. But if you when... don't want to get spoilers, fast forward 30 seconds now. Yeah. There spoiler you. alert. The moment the car you're in, or the, not really a car, but the, the thing that you're sitting in, the moment it goes into the one room and you are basically at the feet of Adas yes. and you just look up, it's unreal. It's, just, I mean, it's real. It's just, honestly, here's what's a little funny. When I, when I realized what I was in the room with and I just kind of scanned up, 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 up to see them, my jaw on the floor. It was <laughs> the same kind of looking up, 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 my jaw on the floor that happened under Spaceship Earth. Oh, oh. that's awesome. Yes. For Just me, the that, scope of it. Yeah. For me, yeah, that moment yeah. too at, at Hogwarts, the first time you see it at. Yeah. Universal. Yeah. So, so yeah, I just be the moment. That is awesome. That is so true. That moment is just like ingrained in my core memories now okay i gotta know did you like ogas yes that was so fun <laughs> i know you didn't re- you probably had never seen star tours before so seeing dj rex probably was yeah. lost on you as far as it, how funny that is yeah i just was wondering as somebody who's not uh into going to the parks all the time what did you think of ogas oh my gosh so fun the atmosphere is super fun i mean we lucked out because we got to get to a table we didn't have to sort of like we lucked out but yes. it's just interesting. It's again, you're in that world. You're not, yeah, it's not a touristy thing. It's an, it feels real. Yes. Yeah. I really it's like the it. local dive bar that we just hopped into. Yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I think Cloud hopped into actually. Yes. 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 <laughs> so um, we are running out of time as far as our um, interview goes. It's going to let us, it's going to cut us off here. But I do want to okay. do a quick a quick fire with you. So this is just okay. off the top of your head. First, first answers. Your favorite Disney movie? Ah, I got nothing. <laughs> I guess Bayonet. <laughs> what what's the one called? Um, the one Big Hero Six. In it. Big Hero, Big Hero Six. Six. Yeah, because <laughs> I love him. Uh, your Disney character? Favorite Disney character? The genie in Aladdin. Favorite Disney ride? Smuggler's Run. Nice. Wow. Okay. Interesting. And your, you may not have an answer for this. Your favorite flavor of Dole Whip. I've never had Dole Dole Whip. (laughs) (laughs) You say pineapple. It's okay. Pineapple. Pineapple. Okay. There you go. (laughs) We'll fix that next time too. Yeah. (laughs) Well, Catherine, it's been a blast talking to you about what you thought about Epcot and the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Any last thing you want to get off your chest about going to Epcot? (laughs) Are you going to go with this uh, next year again? <laughs> I'm definitely going to go again and eat more food. I, yeah, I just think Epcot's beautiful. 
And I hope that when you go in a couple of weeks, you don't forget to eat the ones that I chose that we didn't get to. They're, They're on the list. list. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, so good to talk to you. I'm glad we finally yeah. got to introduce you live and in person to our Me listeners. too. It's so fun. <laughs> All right. Say, say goodbye. Goodbye. That was fun. Before we go, we'd like to thank our friends, our old friend Andy again at the Palm Springs Linguist. The Palm Springs Linguist is a great place to go for videos on Disney culture and mostly language. Andy is a great linguist. That's what he does. If you have any love of language and of Disney, check out the Palm Springs Linguists on YouTube. Also, our friends Ken and Lynn at the Sweep Spot for their help in getting this started. We'd also like to give a big thanks out to our social media coordinator, Riley Piper, audio engineers Joey Humphrey and Paul Trett, and logo artist Evan Piper for their invaluable help and support. And as always, thank you, Phoenicians. Thank you, Phoenicians. And don't forget to like, subscribe, rate, and review. It really, really does help folks find us. Thanks for coming along with us on this episode of The Ocean Adventure. I'm Rod. And I'm Sue. And we'll see you live. Bye.